Howdy dudes, B Junior here again for another in the series of Movie Collection Videos 2011. Moving on today with another dead format, I'm going to show you my minuscule uh, Laserdisc collection that I've done over the last couple of years. A little disclaimer here, I didn't get into Laserdisc till probably about two years ago, and I know it's way past overdue for their, I think they cut, quit making, uh, the last Laserdisc was Sleepy Hollow in the year 2000, that was the last one they made. You gotta remember, Laserdisc was around from the late 70s on through. It's just that it was one of those formats that was kind of the godfather or grandfather of the DVD. Yes, it was an optical laser format, but it just was a little too expensive for the average Joe to get right off the shelf. So, And you had to go to like uh, more of a specialty store to get them or, and or order them through the mail somehow. I don't know. But uh, there's your historic rundown of Laserdisc. But I did, but now, you know, nowadays you can acquire your favorites for a few bucks here and there on eBay, and that's the best place I recommend that you go. If you're wanting to start a small laser disc collection, hit eBay, get you a cheap player, um, don't pay too much for it, or hit your Goodwill and or Salvation Army stores. I've seen some laser disc players pop up there. Now, they may not work, but you only have about 10 bucks in the machine, and you can build you a small collection of your favorites. Now today I've got about 20 or so, so I'm going to go through them, show you what I got in the old cabinet here, the old vault. We'll go through uh, my laser disc collection, which isn't really hefty, but I don't know, I thought I'd just be thorough and show these, because they're kind of big, they're kind of awkward, they're like big record sized things, and they're kind of fun to play around with. Forrest Gump, that's right, this is a gatefold, and what that means is it's got a big old fold, kind of like a double album. There's old Forrest inside. There he is running in the back. Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Who says this can't be fun, guys? Here's one of my all-time favorite mob flicks by Sergio Leone. I believe it's his last film, Once Upon a Time in America. This is not a gatefold, but it is a double disc because it's so darn long. Watch out for this one, guys. If you're in the market to buy this on any format, get the full version of it. It's about a three-and-a-half-hour version. or I mean, it's really long. But the uh, there is a cut down like two hour version of this movie and it sucks because you got a lot of characters in this movie and some of the characters just kind of come in and leave and you don't know what they were there for because of the cut down so watch out for that one. Here is the theatrical widescreen version on Laserdisc of Apocalypse Now. This is a uh, gatefold. Check out the art on that one, dude. I always loved Apocalypse Now. My dad uh, showed me this movie first on home video, and ever since then I fell in love with it. So, and it's just one of his dad. My dad is a Vietnam veteran, and myself of Gulf War or Desert Storm or whatever you want to call it, Gulf War One era. It's kind of kind of one of those films that we just both enjoy. Here's one I enjoyed from my childhood, The Empire Strikes Back. This is a widescreen version, gatefold there. There's the Adats, the Imperial Walkers, coming to get the rebels. You rebel scum! Uh, here's one I have not even watched, guys. I got this in a lot last year. This is Todd McFarlane's special edition of Spawn, the HBO series, I believe it was. There's some artwork. I used to collect the uh, Todd McFarlane Spawn series on the comic books when I was collecting a lot back in the day. This is HBO video. Here's one that I guess I just wanted to have, and it was in that same lot, and I didn't have it on any other format. It's not something I'm going to watch all the time, but it's a Barry Levinson film. Sphere. I believe this is a uh, movie based on a novel by Michael Crichton. Love it or hate it kind of film. Anyways. What Dreams May Come. Not a very uplifting film. Came in that same lot for cheap. I don't know. My wife and I saw this at the movies and I don't think I've watched it too many times since because I don't know. It's good to watch for the visuals of its time but I don't know. It just doesn't really send you out with a good attitude I don't guess. I'm all about all things Clint Eastwood, so this is one I didn't have my DVDs, so I picked it up too. Perfect World with Kevin Costner. This is a highly underrated film. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, kind of a simplistic movie. I like Clint Eastwood's uh, side character. He's kind of a third-tier character in this movie, just a supporting character. He did direct it, but uh, Kevin Costner really goes for it in that film. Let's get some more out here, dudes. We dig into the vault here. Oops, there went a cassette tape. Let's see what else we've got here today. 
Yeah, here we go. Back to the Future 3, widescreen letterbox edition. It's the only Back to the Future movie I have on Laserdisc. I've got the rest of these either on DVD or VHS around here somewhere. Good old 80s flicks. The original Star Wars, widescreen edition. Gatefold there. There's uh, Obi-Wan and Darth Vader going at it. It's pretty cool. I, know, I love the original Star Wars trilogy. Part of my youth, part of me. Braveheart. How can you not have Braveheart? Excellent artwork on that one too. Another gatefold. This one's got great quality on it too. I mean, Laserdisc is like a step. If you don't know, it's like a step down from DVD quality. It's a uh, how do I, I, DVD has 480 lines of uh, resolution. Uh, from what I've researched, Laserdisc has somewhere in the realm of about uh, probably about. 425 I think it is so it's just a step down but the Braveheart one looks really good um, here's one I don't think I've showed before Pulp Fiction and uh, this is one of my last laser disc purchases I got um, I just love that cover art on that there's some uh, inside cover art on it it's a double disc one the back there there's Samuel Jackson and Travolta Pulp Fiction I've always said it Pulp Fiction being the type and style of movie that it is, I've always said that it's basically one of those that it just seems to I mean, you can have it on about any format now, but it's just one of those that I just feel right having it on Laserdisc or VHS, some older kind of out of print, because that's kind of what it's about. It's like a pulp novel come to come to life. Oh, here's a classic, guys. Here's classic artwork, too. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the uh, all-new restored version, uncut and unedited. I don't know. There's the back cover. I mean, how can you do better than that, man? That is awesome. There again, if I ever get to meet Gunnar Hansen, I'm going to get him to sign this one for me probably as a keepsake. But uh, anyways, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Here's another one. And here's one I've grown to like more and more over the years. For It's kind of like a go-to movie. It is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. There's the... I think this is a style, poster art style B. This is, isn't the original, or it is the original, and they had the Breakfast Club pose on the other one. They use this one for the laser disc. There's the other poster art they use. Anyway, I just watched this one on DVD the other day, and I just, uh, I don't know, it's one of those that I can watch anytime now, mainly for the dark comedy that's in the movie. I don't know. It's just a good flick. Here's the last the batch here. Let's see. Last of the Mohicans. Filmed near where I grew up in North Kakalaki, up in the mountains. Michael Mann film. I don't know. I always enjoyed it. But I enjoy the theatrical version of this one better with the music that they used and everything. The director's version of this movie is a little elongated and it uses different music cues, I think. But it's not really anything majorly different. So I go for the theatrical little side note, my mother actually met Daniel Day-Lewis. She was working at a hotel at the time as a, kind of the front desk manager. She He came in with short hair, and she didn't know who she was meeting at the time because he didn't have all the hair extensions in for the movie. And when we went to see the movies, my mom about jumped out of her seat. She was like, oh, my God, that's the guy I met, and I didn't even know it. I mean, kind of funny, little surreal experience. The Fog. Debating on whether or not to get this one signed at Fright Night by John Carpenter. I just, I've got some John Carpenter uh, other uh, posters and stuff, but The Fog is one of my favorites, so I don't know. This might go to Fright Night. I'm unsure at this point. One of my favorite Rodriguez films, Desperado. Just kind of simplistic uh, cover art, but just reminds me of 1995, guys, the mid-90s. We had a, just a different style of action going on at that time, and one of my faves. Here's one of my faves in my childhood. I absolutely love the Mad Max films, guys. Mad Max, widescreen edition here. There's the original poster art, too. In the back. Just one of those trend-setting Australian films. How can you have that without Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior? This, of course, has the kind of the U.S. title on it. Um, I have the U.S. re-release on VHS that actually has the Mad Max 2 title on it when you view the film. But I just had to have the laser disc. This was cheap. Got it on eBay. Mad Max uh, 3 or Mad Max Beyond Thunderdorm. Uh, Thunderdorm. Thunderdorm. <laughs> Thunderdome. Man, 
I guess I'm still in the Dorm That Drip Blood review or something there. It's weird. Anyway, got Tina Turner and dressed in all metal in that one. I, don't know. I always enjoyed this one, too. I mean, this is directed by two directors. George Miller, of course, the other director from the first two films, and George Ogilvy, I believe. So you can you can kind of tell the different scenes where the movie takes off in a different direction and stuff. So, I don't know. I always enjoyed this one, too. Two men enter, one man leaves. And it's Mel Gibson. This was in that lot with Sphere and a couple of others. It's Jackie Chan, Rumble in the Bronx. I always enjoyed this film, so it was an added bonus to pick this one up. I watched it as soon as I got it, and I haven't watched it since, but I don't know. It's one of those good Hong Kong action fair kind of movies. Probably one of my favorite all-time laser discs, the director's re-release of Escape from New York widescreen. Uh, it's got the interviews with John Carpenter, the gatefold artwork there. Probably one of my top three John Carpenter films and most watched of all time. Good way to book in the laser disc collection there. Guys, that's been your rundown on laser disc collection. Guys, how can I forget about two of my favorite laser discs? This goes with the laser disc video. There is the Streets of Fire. This one's my only sealed laser disc. That's a brand new one, never been opened. And also, Phantasm. I'm gonna try to get. I'm definitely getting that one signed by Michael Baldwin at Fright Night coming up. Rock on, dudes. I'll see you next time.